After studying this module, you shall be able to know about the nature of fiscal policy reforms in India since independence, understand the various phases in the fiscal reform measures, assess the nature of long-term fiscal reforms and its benefits, analyze the initiatives introduced by the government for the fiscal consolidation. We shall commence this module by studying the objectives of fiscal policy in the post-independence. Of late now, Indian economy has been in the spotlight. It has been among the fastest growing economies during the last two decades. Wide-ranging economic reforms have taken place. It has one of the primary objectives of fiscal policy in the post-independence years was stimulating and accelerating growth. In the newly emerging economy, due to low income levels and financial savings and accelerating growth. In a newly emerging economy, due to low income levels and financial savings, the fiscal policy was given the responsibility of creating the capital base for infrastructure building and stimulating growth. As India embarked on a planning process since 1950, which assigned a large role to the public sector, taxation was the main instrument used to raise funds for planned development. In 1970, the taxation and expenditure policies aimed at achieving the twin objectives of equity and social justice. However, a regime of high marginal tax rates did not yield the necessary revenue to support the required public expenditure. The government action of administered pricing also did not yield desired results. So, by 1980s, the public finance was in the state of disarray. It seems that the fiscal pattern was destabilizing the relationship between the economy and the budget, thereby resulting in persistently increasing huge deficits. The decade of 1980s was considered as a decade of fiscal deterioration also raising the pertinent question of sustainability of fiscal stance of the government. The fiscal issues of 1980s also had an impact on the external sector resulting in the macroeconomic crisis of 1991. The economy was facing a large size monetized deficit which was exerting immense inflationary pressures. Also, a persistent and burgoing revenue deficit increased debt burden and reduced the availability of resources for the capital investment. The structural adjustment program and the consequent economic reforms gave a fresh dimension to the fiscal policy which focused not on the various instruments and issues of debt but also on the overall fiscal sustainability in the long run. Although the first half of 1990s witnessed some fiscal correlation, its retraction during the second half of the decade underlined the need for a consistent and sustainable fiscal consolidation process. Let us have a brief look into the economic conditions at the time of reform. In the post-independence years, with the gradual abatement of political and economic uncertainty, stimulating and accelerating the growth was one of the primary objectives of the fiscal policy. Thus, India embarked on a planning process since 1950 which assigned a large role to the public sector and taxation was made the mainstay of the public finances. Fiscal policy focused on achieving greater equity and social justice during the 1970s and both taxation and expenditure policies were employed toward fulfilling the objectives. High marginal tax rates did not yield the necessary revenue to support the envisaged public expenditure. 
the growth in receipts thus lagged behind the surge in disbursements despite the substantial amount of resources mobilized through the additional taxation and hike in the administered prices high marginal tax rates did not yield the necessary revenue to support the envisaged public expenditure the growth in receipts thus lagged behind the surge in disbursements despite the substantial amount of resources mobilized through additional taxation and hike in the administered prices the fiscal imbalance of 1980s spilled over to the external sector resulting in the macroeconomic crisis of 1991 another dis quieting feature of the fiscal system was the large size of monetized deficit which exerted inflationary pressures the persistent and burgeoning revenue deficit which became endemic in the system pre-exempted the borrowed resources reducing the availability of resources for the capital investment although the first half of 1990s witnessed some fiscal correlation its retraction during the second half of the decade underlined the need for a consistent and sustainable fiscal consolidation process the government therefore formulated and enacted the fiscal responsibility legislation which signaled a new dawn in the fiscal consolidation phases in the fiscal reforms phase 1 from 1947 to 1968 the fiscal policy in the post independence era focused on the taxation policy to achieve various economic objectives to promote employment tax incentives and tax holidays were granted to new investment ventures inequality was aimed to be reduced through progressive taxes on income and wealth emphasis was given to increasing import duties to reduce the pressures on balance of payment and tax rebate in excise duties on consumption goods were introduced to stabilize the prices as initially there was a narrow tax base the tax policy had to rely mainly on the indirect taxes phase 2 from 1969 to 1980 in the second phase fiscal policy was used as a means to reduce income inequality along with promoting economic growth the main instrument to achieve this objective was taxation so the government raised the income tax rates by substantially high levels during the 1970s the marginal rate of taxation was moved up to 97% and together with the incidence of wealth tax crossed 100% wealth tax estate duty and gift tax were also imposed indirect taxes were increased on the goods considered luxurious or inessential these initiatives were taken to meet the government objective of alleviating poverty and bring about the social justice phase 3 from 1981 to 1990 At the beginning of the third phase the economic situation was characterized by low economic growth high inflation and deteriorating balance of payment as a result of a sharp increase in the price of crude oil imports the government sought to reduce its deficit through tax increases new tax saving instruments were introduced to enable the financing of the large plan expenditure tax concessions were also given to non residents to encourage flow of foreign exchange remittances to address the balance of payment problem custom duties were hiked to contain growth in imports augment revenue and protect the domestic industry the long term fiscal policy announced by the government of india in 1985 presented for the first time a long term perspective for fiscal policy in which the central government recognized the deteriorating fiscal positions and uh, the most important challenge of 1980 and set out the specific targets and policies for achieving this fiscal turnaround it indicated a direction of change in tax policy required to promote growth increase build in elasticity of the tax system secure better tax compliance and move towards a more equitable distribution of the burden of financing the plan 
A modified system of value added tax that is mod vat was introduced in 1986 in a phased manner to reduce the distortionary effect of tax on production and minimize the tax cascading and increase progressively reforms in custom duties focused on increased reliance on tariff system rather than on the quantitative restriction to regulate the imports in order to yield more revenue this phase marked the first real effort towards a long term perspective for tax reforms which in turn was spurred by the realization on the part of the policy that the economic effects of taxation have to be considered to ensure against distortions in resource allocation and adverse effect on the economic growth the administrative implications and the possible behavioral response of both the tax administrators as well as taxpayers have to be considered while designing the tax structure thus considerable importance was given to the issue of tax evasion and the factors which determined phase 4 1991 onwards the focus of tax reforms before 1991 was on enhancing the revenue productivity to finance the large developmental plans and promoting equity the reforms since 1991 were aimed at augmenting revenues and removing anomalies in the tax structures through restructuring simplification and rationalization of both direct and indirect taxes drawing mainly from the recommendations of the tax reforms committee of 1991 whose chairman was dr raja j chalya efforts were made to resolve issues in the tax structure through restructuring simplification and rationalization of both direct and indirect taxes these were based on chalya committee report recommendations the key tax reforms included lowering the maximum marginal rate on the personal income tax widening of the tax base by way of a series of steps including the introduction of presumptive taxes adoption of a set of six economic criteria for identification of potential taxpayers in the urban areas and taxation of services reducing the corporate tax rate on both the domestic and the foreign companies unification of tax rates on closely held as well as widely held domestic companies rationalization of capital gains tax and the dividend tax progressive reduction in the peak rate of custom duty on non agricultural products and rationalization of excise duties Moving on to discuss the long term fiscal policy the main objective of adopting a long term fiscal policy were restoring the fiscal equilibrium in the economy reforming the existing tax structure promoting the socially desirable activities focusing on the market oriented development various steps that were initiated by the policy makers to achieve the objectives of LTFP included simplification of income tax and bringing stability in the tax regulations identifying new areas of taxation to expand the tax base bringing transparency in the budget framing introduction of mod vat merging several excise duties into a single basic duty for ease in functioning reducing the tariff in order to promote international competitiveness abolition of surcharge on profits improvement in tax administration and effective implementation with proper application of ltfp the benefits achieved were as follows tax revenue collection became better non tax revenue also performed better through non plan expenditure was high borrowing and budget deficit remained high contribution of public enterprises was below expectation assistance to state and union territories remained high government also took initiatives to announce a series of austerity measures such as making strategic investments in infrastructure and human resource rationalizing the major subsidies improving tax accumulation of debt encouraging the privileged exports emphasizing on compliance of rules and regulations 
and curtailing plan and non-plan budgetary support to loss-making public enterprises. Fiscal policy and the medium-term fiscal plan analysis. A noteworthy development in the fiscal area was the enactment of the Fiscal Responsibility and Budget Management that is FRBM Act of 2003 by the Government of India. Five state governments with Karnataka, Punjab, Kerala and Tamil Nadu and Uttar Pradesh have also enacted the similar legislations. In addition, Maharashtra has introduced the Fiscal Legislation Bill in its State Assembly. It is important to note that the structure and content of these legislations go beyond the conventional fiscal legislations that is, setting the ceiling on the fiscal indicators. The legislations included enforcement mechanism as well as the supporting institutional mechanism to enable the observance of fiscal legislations and prudence. Furthermore, the legislations have combined fiscal transparency and provisions of medium-term fiscal policy framework which have significant impl implications for budget integrity and accountability. The FRBM bill was passed by the Lok Sabha in May 2003 and by the Rajya Sabha in August 2003. The institutional arrangements were being envisaged to achieve sound fiscal management through elimination of revenue deficit, reduction in the fiscal deficit and phased decline in the centre's borrowing from RBI. The Government of India legislation has been enacted in terms of the conventional golden principles of fiscal legislations with deficit rule, debt rule and borrowing rule, budget management, medium term fiscal plan and evaluation of fiscal performance. The rules under the Act have been modified on July 5, 2004. It may be noted that the terminal year for the elimination of the revenue deficit has been extended to year 2008 and 9 through an amendment to the FRBM Act of 2003 which was carried out in July 2004. Fiscal legislations at the state levels broadly akin to the centre's fiscal legislations and the main focus of the state legislations is the deficit reductions Targets in terms of key deficit indicators, particularly elimination of revenue deficit in the medium term. In addition, fiscal targets aim at reducing GFT. The targets in respect of GFT, GSTP ratios varies from 2% in Kerala to 3% in Karnataka and Uttar Pradesh. The Karnataka Fiscal Responsibility Act of 2002 aims at reducing GFT by GSDP ratio to 3% and revenue deficit to nil by 2006. The Act has also set limit on the total liabilities at 25% of GSDP by 2015 and on guarantees within the prescribed ceiling under the Karnataka Government Guarantees Act. The Act also specifies budget management through medium-term fiscal plan, compliance through half-yearly review and enhancement of the transparency. The Kerala Fiscal Responsibility that is KFR Act of 2003 has set the GFT target of 2% of GSTP and nil revenue deficit by 2007. Since the Kerala ceiling on the Government Guarantees Act provides for an upper limit on outstanding guarantees at Rs 14,000 crores, no separate provision on guarantees has been made in the KFR Act. The KFR Act also provides for setting up of the Public Expenditure Review Committee which would submit a review report explaining inter alia the reasons for deviation from the fiscal target during the previous years. The Punjab Fiscal Responsibility and Budget Management Act of 2003 contains the rate of growth of GFT to 2% per annum in nominal terms till GFT is below 3% of GSTP 
and stipulates the reduction in the ratio of revenue deficit to the revenue receipts by at least 5% points each year until the revenue balance is achieved. The Act also limits the debt to 40% of GSTP by 2007 and caps the outstanding guarantees on long-term debt to 80% of revenue receipts of the previous year and limits the guarantees on the short-term debt to borrowings in respect of working capital on food credit. The Act provides for medium-term fiscal plan and quarterly review of performance and measures for the fiscal transparency. The Tamil Nadu Fiscal Responsibility Act of 2003 aimed at containing GFT at 2.5% of GSTP and the ratio of revenue deficit to revenue receipts at 5% by 2007. The Act also caps outstanding guarantees at 100% of the total receipts in the preceding year or at 10% of GSDP. In addition to medium-term fiscal plan and measures for transparency, the Act also states that an independent external body would carry out periodic review for compliance. The Act has since been amended in 2004, wherein the terminal year for the target of reduction of revenue deficit to revenue receipts and fiscal deficit to GSDP has been deferred by a year to 2008. Uh, further, the terminal target for fiscal deficit has been raised from 2.5% to 3%. The risk weighted guarantees have also been capped at 75% of the total revenue receipts in the preceding years or at 7.5% of GSDP, whichever is lower. The Uttar Pradesh Fiscal Responsibility Act of 2004 stipulates the limiting GFT to a maximum of 3% by 2009. Revenue deficit would decline to nil over the same period. Total liabilities would be capped at 25% of GSTP by 2018. The Maharashtra Fiscal Responsibility and Budget Management Bill of 2002 specifies that the tax expenditures shall not exceed the revenue receipts after a period of five years from the appointed day. The expenditure would be adjusted as per the latest revenue estimates and the amount of risk due to guarantees would be contained within 1.5% of the expected revenue receipts. Conclusion In India, fiscal policy has played a pivotal role since independence, contributing significantly to the socio-economic development process of the country. Reflecting this, a large growing and erudite body of literature has emerged over the years. Over the years, various instruments of fiscal policy with taxation, public expenditure and public borrowing have been employed with varying degrees of importance to achieve higher economic growth and stability, efficient resource allocation and equitable distribution of income. Furthermore, in India, as in many developing countries, fiscal policy does not operate in isolation as it has close macroeconomic linkages with the real, monetary and the external sectors. Thus, the macroeconomic impact of the fiscal policy is critical for achieving the broader economic goals. Indian public finance today has reached a turning point. The future course of the public finance would critically hang upon the following developments. First, the fiscal policy can be a powerful tool for accelerating growth provided resources are raised efficiently without causing distortions and utilized for delivering the public goods and services including physical and social infrastructure and helping the underprivileged. Total government expenditure as a proportion of GDP needs to be maintained 
and raised at the state level in order to ensure the maintenance of existing infrastructural facilities and create new ones. This calls for a change in the composition of expenditure. Second, adherence to the fiscal legislations both at center and state level is critical for macroeconomic, financial, external sector and budgetary sustainability. Third, fiscal empowerment that is expanding the scope and size of revenue flows into the budget through tax reforms, appropriate user charges and restructuring of public sector undertakings assumes critical importance. Fourth, as the Indian economy becomes more open and integrated with the rest of the world, fiscal policy would have to face greater challenges. Fifth, the approach to fiscal federalism, both in terms of addressing the vertical and horizontal imbalances, would have to focus on institutional reforms which align needs with the revenue capacities. Sixth, the changing demographic profile would make designing an appropriate fiscal policy more complex. Now, we will summarize what we have studied in this module. In the planned economy model adopted since independence, taxation was used as an instrument for reducing private consumption and transferring the resources to the government to enable it to undertake large-scale public investment in an effort to spur economic growth. Second, taxation was also used to reduce inequalities through progressivity in respect of income and wealth, particularly during 1970s. The non-integrated and complex nature of the indirect tax structure and the problems it created in terms of multiplicity of levies and resultant cascading effects received attention in the mid-1980s. Next, preliminary steps to reform the tax structure were taken in the form of introducing the modified value added tax which was known as Mod VAT. Tax reforms received a boost in the early 1990s under the Structural Adjustment Program initiated in the wake of economic crisis of 1991. To deal with the large size of monetized deficit which exerted inflationary pressures, the government formulated and enacted the fiscal responsibility legislation which signaled a new dawn in the fiscal consolidation.